All right, Justine, uh, I'm glad to have you on here. To, uh, let's talk about, first of all, that playing defensively, seventh inning to get that first out. You're going away from your body. Just describe the play. I, I still can't believe you pulled that off. So tell me about it. No, yeah, it was just a little blooper in, in uh, my backhand. And I mean, I've been working on that a lot, my backhand. So it like short hopped and I just try to throw it on the run, you know. Yeah, just no, 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 no whole hum. You get the out. I saw you and Shannon and G. They were kind of chuckling a little bit there. You guys were having a good laugh about that play. No, yeah, they were just hyping me up a little bit. Um, we had a good laugh about it because um, I've been working on that backhand, so they knew that it was a, it was a good, it was a good play. Tell me about that sixth inning. The offense wakes up, gets three runs there. You were a big part of that with that two out RBI. That's something you've been good at since you've been here. Take me through that at bat and, and how that offense came to life in the sixth. No, yeah. Um, we focus on the last six, six outs and um, and just trying to find our pitch, not swinging at the pitcher's pitch. So I was looking for my up pitch and she threw it to me and I took advantage of that and, and put a good spin on it. What is it about you with two outs? You seem to be locked in. I mean, I mentioned last year you were like automatic, it seemed like, driving in hits with two outs and driving in runs. Do you is it? Do you feel different? Do you have a different approach when you have runners on and two outs, or is it just one of those things? Oh, yeah, it definitely – I know how important two-out hitting is, and we work a lot on that in practice. So I was just in the zone. I was really focused on just trying to get us another run, some, some insurance. So – um that was my mindset tell me about your thoughts on g you know her as well as anybody was dominant was overpowering 10 strikeouts had a no hitter until two outs in the six uh but she was electrified yeah she always is doing great on the mound um as a defense we always want to back her up because we know she's doing her best out there and she's always dominating so that was she, she's always really good out there both her and Aaliyah were dominant from a defensive standpoint. What is it like when those two are on clicking? Both of them had no hitters with two outs in the sixth inning as a defense. Do you know that when the no hitters going on? Do you do you, do you sense that as a, as a defense? Yeah, we we definitely sense that. We try not to like jinx it and like say, oh, she's throwing a, a no hitter. <laughs> but we that even gives us more drive on the on the defense to dive and try to keep um, from them getting a hit or any or stuff like that. Now you got one more against this team. They're a really good team, strappy team. What's going to be the approach now as you try to uh, get the sweep here on Saturday and take another one? No, we, we know that um, they're going to come us, come at us even harder tomorrow. So we need to focus on our strengths and um, just getting our offense going. They've been holding us down pretty good, but we're hoping to come out strong tomorrow with our bats. How do you all feel as a play doubleheader? You played in Fort Myers a doubleheader. You're going to play a lot of these doubleheaders. What what's it like from a preparation standpoint? You got a lot of depth too, which probably helps you, right? Yeah. Um, even after the starting lineup, we have we know we have girls behind us that are that can get the job done. So that just gives us more of a drive to um, to just trust each other and just keep playing it out. Well, congrats on the two wins and the great play there, but uh, congrats. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> What's up, Shop? <laughs> How are you? Doing all right. Doing okay. Uh, not as well as you are. Take me through that sixth inning where your offense kind of uh, popped in there with three runs. You were a big part of that. You got that infield RBI hit. Yeah, so uh, we obviously knew the pitcher was throwing uh, drop balls. So I knew that I was either going to have to stay in and get under it or I was going to have to uh, drive one into the ground. And I had Kia there at third base. And I know she's – super fast and she could do it. So uh, it worked out pretty well. And Ali, after scoring so much against New Mexico State last week, you guys are kind of quiet tonight. How did how did that kind of affect the game? Yeah, so I think it's it's been a very different uh, pitching style change. Um, we've been preparing for it. We made our adjustments a, a little bit later in the game. We started hitting pretty hard ground balls, but um, uh, I have no doubt in my mind that tomorrow will come out better. Um, yeah, there's just a couple of, couple of adjustments that need to be made uh, sooner. Um, but yeah, you had three hits in the double header. Are you feel you feel comfortable at the plate? How do you compare where you, how you feel right now at the plate compared to like the previous years? Yeah, so it's 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 been a, a rough fall and spring semester leading up to season. It's hard to take off you know a year from from softball and 
you're going to have those deficits. And so I've been working pretty hard. We do a lot of timing drills and, uh, you know, pitching machine practice. And, uh, it's been, it's been helping a lot. It's the balls, uh, uh, pretty big to me right now. So I can see, I can see it pretty fast. So, um, pretty lucky for that. Now I just got to get my timing to, uh, to hit the ball. Well, <laughs> uh, so your pitching was absolutely lights out tonight. Only one run allowed across both games. Does that kind of take some of the pressure off you guys batting? Uh, most definitely it's, it's, way easier going up against a pitcher knowing that you can have fun with it you know that you're attacking and it's not a, a pressure situation um i think our team does pretty well in those situations but it's a lot more fun when you can just go out and uh do what you do best without any pressure on it and cheers to to g and alia for both holding them to one run or one hit you're kind of hard on yourself. You're hitting over 400. I think you're doing more than okay there. So, uh, but tell me about the depth on this team because you all have so many different variety of weapons and it showed here in this double header with so many, throwing so many different uh, pieces at them and they finally broke through. You know, you're one that can play all three outfield positions. You could start, you could come out of the bench and, and not miss a beat. Same with other players. Just talk about the depth on this team here because you're going to have a lot of these double headers. Yeah, so... Uh... At the beginning of the year, someone asked me what's different this year than than last year, and I said that we our freshmen came to play. They they came and every single one of them um, added to our depth chart for our positions. Um, it's made it very interesting. I'm sure very hard on Coach Bear to to pick uh, what our lineup is going to look like, but it's it's awesome to know that we all have different strengths and weaknesses. So depending on who we're playing or depending on the day, we all know that there's someone that's, we're not going to get beat by the same pitcher, you know? Somebody that's really good at rise balls um, is some, someone that is not very good at rise balls. Like, we compare really well to, to each other. Uh, now, as you go for the sweep tomorrow, what are you really going to be focusing on? And what would what would a sweep mean to you again um, to so early in the season? Yeah, so uh, to, uh, next Next game, I think we're really going to be focusing on um, really waiting on the ball and uh, seeing what pitcher, what pitch is being pitched to us and making that adjustment sooner. Um, I think our defense is always going to be consistent. I think that our our offense, we just got to make that adjustment a little sooner and we'll have some fun with it. Um, it would mean a lot to have a sweep at home. I know we had it against Mexico State, but coming off of a loss on Wednesday, against uh against Kazoo. it's it would feel a lot better you know carrying on with the season having a, a sweep under our belt tell me about kira at center field when you were with her there you've known her for a while now you played together for a long time i mean you two just kind of it's just like don't even you know a ball never drops there it's almost a shocker when a ball drops in between you two but that she roams and you roam and that chemistry you all have in that outfield yeah uh it's really fun me and kira have known each other since uh before high school um, play together high school and travel ball. And so everyone kind of makes a joke that we have this un, uh, unverbal communication going on with each other. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I just know right off the bat, we know each other like right off the bat, who's going to get it. Uh, so it makes it very easy <laughs> for communication wise. And uh, we make a joke that the Nike check on our outfield is the only spot that's our weakness. If it wasn't to the Nike check, we should have had it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question, because I get asked about this, and I bring it up on the broadcast. Your name, Denali. Tell the, uh, the people how you, uh, your parents came up to naming you Denali. Yeah, so they were actually on a trip. Um, they were pregnant with my sister, Sierra, and they went to Alaska to uh, Denali Mountain, um, the biggest mountain in North America, and they loved the name. And they're like, that's what we're going to name our next kid if it's a girl. And here I am. <laughs> A beautiful name, and it's a very common, and we're uh, happy to have you there. Congrats on the win. Keep up the great play. Thank you so much. All right, Coach, uh, congrats. Doubleheader sweep. Let's start with the starting pitching, obviously. Aliyah and G both dominant. Both had no hitters going into the sixth inning with two outs, uh, but were electrifying, only giving up, uh, what, combined uh, one run in 14 innings of pitch. Start there with those two. It was magnificent. Yes. Um, I mean – I think, for one, it, it really protected our bats today because, you know, we faced two two very good pitchers. They kept us off balance, and 
Uh, sometimes we were hitting the ball right at people. So having pitching performances like that really helps us. But I mean, you got two people that complement each other. And we talk about this um, in the past that they complement each other so well. And Aaliyah is just that competitive kid that'll just come, you know, throw the punch right away. And G is such a good student of the game and learning what happens with Aaliyah's game and is able to complement that in such a way that she did today. So, um, you know, we take, I think they hit two change-ups. Um, we'll have to uh, talk to the, the pitch caller there. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but um, I mean, what a great game. Ten strikeouts, you can't complain about that. And I know Aaliyah dominated as well. Um, both were really eff efficient today. So um, it allowed us to get back in the dugout, and that, that helped us. Uh, work through some things. I think it's the first two games that we've won without having to hit a home run to to score some runs. So it was fun. Coach, congrats again on the win. Um, specifically in the first game, what were your views on kind of the officiating? I saw you kind of go up to them a couple of times. <laughs> um, you know, you got to have fun with it, I guess. Uh, I, I think – all I'll say is, you know, some people have their, their A games and some people don't, I guess. But um, there were a few things that were a little off right there. And the, the way we play the game and how fast we play it, I think we speed it up on everyone. Um, and so it requires people to have to make really quick decisions. And um, that's, you know, that's all a part of the game. Um, I'd like to see our team not get so tied up in that and like caught up in it because we can't control that we can only control how we recover and how we um, respond to it. And so I know that our group did a better job of that in, in game two. Um, but yeah, some funny things. And, and again, I think that just goes along with how fast we, we speed up the game and it kind of puts people out of position and whatnot. And so um, it's part of the game. Your versatility was showcased, especially in the second game. Jada Cody catching, I thought was fantastic. Her and G seemed to have that chemistry right away. G, 10 strikeouts. You can just really felt locked in. Jensen played really good defense at third base, made a great couple plays there. I mean, Molina speaks. We, I, mean, we take, I still don't know how she made that play in the seventh inning. Uh, she explained it to me. I still don't believe she made it, but she did it. But talk about that, especially Cody there. The catch with G there. I have a feeling that can't, that, that can't be the last time those two are going to be paired up is it yeah no um you know this whole covid deal they they came back over the summer um just because it was a better scenario for them to be back in orlando and so they trained on their own um and pitched to each other every day pitched and caught and like even g threw to jada for and justine to hit too so um they really grew a bond over that time and that's something that we have seen um, in the past. And, you know, we haven't had to utilize it as much when we have Carissa and both Jules um, that all, they all kind of hit. Um, but yeah, you're, you're going to see it more because we've got lots of games packed in, uh, you know, multiple days in a row and we've got to keep our kids healthy and, and fresh um, for conference. So uh, they do have a, a good bond and that's a great eye to see that. <coughs> Uh, how, did, how did it feel to really go out here and shut down uh, McNeese State after a tough loss on Wednesday and kind of bounce back? Oh, I think it's great. You know, um, despite uh, McNeese's record, uh, every single one of their losses is to a top ranked team. Um, and so they're a good team. Don't, you know, you can't look at that and take that for granted. And we talked about that with our group. Um, this is, this is a tough team. They have great pitching staff. Um, and I mean, they just ran with, some of the best teams in the, this past week they've got they've got a very strong schedule as well um so i love how you know we we left the missouri game in, on on wednesday and uh we're moving on and learning from it and uh, we made some really good base running decisions today we made some good um, adjustments with our last six outs in the game and so uh, that's all I can ask from our group is, you know, we're, we're adapting and adjusting and learning from game to game, pitch to pitch, inning to inning.
Did this team need these type of games, tight games here? You respond in that sixth inning with that three-run inning after they had just tied it up. And sometimes when the team breaks a no-hitter, they can carry that momentum to victory. But your team kind of responded right back. Like even in the Missouri game, you responded back. But that sixth inning was huge, getting that three runs. And, and you know, shot pocker has been tremendous. And Molina, as usual, two out, RBI hit. Yeah, Um I mean, it, it, it's huge to be able to be in those situations. And like you said, um, we were all aware of the no hitter um, in the dugout. Uh, and I think both hits kind of went to the same place. I'm not, I'm not too sure, but uh, well, no, I'm sorry. One went to right field, one went to a uh, shortstop. Um, but they were all kind of those plays that were just out of reach of, of being able to make the play. So um, those are these are awesome games to be a part of, and we need to be a part of them. We need to learn how to grind through them and and stick it out and play all seven innings, uh, because that's what's going to happen in conference, especially playing against the same team four times um, in a row. So it it's huge for us to learn from because our two losses are one run losses, and it, we we really only lost in one inning. So we need to recognize and capitalize on winning as many innings in a game and playing the momentum of innings of, like you said, you know, we give up a run, we shut it down and then we come back and we, we go ahead. Um, and so we're talking about those things. We're educating our kids. Um, we had, though we have some seasoned players, we do have a very young squad. Um, the majority of our kids are freshmen and sophomores. So, um, you, you know, it, it's, it's good to be in these moments and be able to talk about them at practice and see those results. you've shown now that you can win in really low scoring games with the pitching excelling and you've also shown that you can rack up the runs how does that kind of speak to the team's versatility and um just talent overall yeah well i think too and i didn't i don't know if i touched on this when elo asked but um we really focus on defense and we talk about routine play and we talk about getting outs and and, and that allows us to stay in those those close games um but you know, we pride on our, we pride ourselves on being a well-rounded team playing on both sides of the ball. Um, traditionally, I mean, we've always had great pitching here, um, and we've had clutch players here. Um, and our our goal is to be dominant in all areas of the game, all aspects of the game, and you know, lead the country in those areas. Um, so I'm I'm really proud of the. Um, just the fire that they have, the determination they have, um, and the passion they have for continuing to put this program and keep this program on the map um, and play for the past, present, and the future. You've been playing Katie Birch. has got a lot of playing time the last couple of games. Really has been producing for you. You played him at, played her at left. You played her in the outfield. Then you started Volpe tonight, got you to play at center field. Just talk about those two and the roles they will have for you and the impact they'll have on the teams. Yeah, um, well, we kind of felt like these were pitchers that um, they're going to keep us off balance. It's going to get, it's going to be hard to lift these balls that they're throwing to us, and so we got to put the game in motion. And that, that's you know, kind of go, ties into Jonathan's question too. Of that's what allows us to push through those games. So you've got speed in all of those, you know, Danelli, um, Elise, and Katie Burge, Kennedy, Cersei. Um, it speeds up the game on them, and so. Uh, we needed to have those opportunities to do that because we're not going to always be able to rely on the, the long ball. Um, so it was fun to see that. I mean, we, we talk about, you know, the hitting and all of that, but I mean, we had some great base running today, um, taking first to third on a, on a misplay pl played ball. And I think that really allowed the momentum of the game to, to go in our favor. So um, just being able to now use all parts of our game and, you still haven't seen us yet. I don't think we, we saw maybe one base today. So um, we'll continue to do that more and more.